Okay. Um, we have been getting in a lot of new books into the library. However, we, uh, I've been discovering some older books from the library. Now, I didn't even know about this author before I found his books on the shelf. So, we have books like um, Night of the Bat. We have like five of these. We have Reef of Death. Uh, we have like three of those. We have uh, Raptor, about these mutant creatures. It seems like all of his books have something to do with um, with some sort of like animal kind of uh, event. Uh, the book that we are going to be doing today is called Rats. Now, um, now this Rats book, I found this on the shelf. And, uh, and I was like, well, you know, this is kind of older. I haven't, I haven't really seen this. I think it's from, like, the, I think it was published uh, 1999, right? So we're like, wow, this book is, is kind of old. But then when I looked at the back of them, we have, like, ten books on the shelf. And all of these, all of these backs have, you know, they're just covered with checkouts. And I'm like, whoa, you know, a while ago, this used to be, like, a really hot book. This was really popular. Um, I wonder what it's about. So I read the back of it. And I'm like, okay, these rats are kind of, you know, taking over New York City. And I was like, okay, you know, that sounds kind of cool. You know, these creatures come in and, and take over things. Um, and then I read the uh, I read the first chapter, and then I went over to the trash can and just <laughs> I just I just vomited right in the trash can because this is really gross. So I'll give you the warning right up here up front that this is going to be gross. So if any time during my reading, if it gets too much for you, you can cover your ears and just, you know, la 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 la, don't, don't listen to it. But we, uh, we start here with, uh, with Leroy Zabasek and, um, and he's a sanitation worker. He works at the dump. Uh, you know, he, he runs the bulldozer that, uh, you know, that, um, that bulldozes the uh, the stuff there for the dump. So that's where we that's where we begin our story. This is uh, this is Rats by Paul Zindel, uh, and this is Chapter One, The Festering. His first day back from the Fourth of July vacation, Z Leroy Zabzek knew he'd get some good target practice with the rats in Area Seventeen, Garbage Siberia. He muttered to himself as he mounted his bulldozer. He checked the stubble on his leathery face, made certain his flask of vodka was tucked into the hip pocket of his overalls, and left the main sanitation depot at 7.05 a.m. He headed the bulldozer out past the asphalt cover of the dump to what was left of the open garbage. He was glad the dump was nearly sealed. He'd been working there from the beginning, before it had the fancy name of the Staten Island Landfill. Two decades of breathing the reek reeking garbage was enough. In a few weeks, he'd be retired, start collecting on a fat pension with health and dental, and it'd be time to dream. He kept his eye out for rats as he edged the bulldozer along the south rim of the asphalt. The mall was across the highway. On his right was one of the new black mountains of tar. I'm gonna miss ya, he yelled at the smothered dump. Yeah, I'll miss ya. Hey, guys, Leroy called out as he drove the bulldozer into the freshly dumped garbage and saw the first few rats of the day scurrying across the top of a heap of meat scraps. I'm going to see a lot of you by the farm today, he said, stopping to grab his BB gun and fire off a few shots. It's going to be my little farewell present to y'all. Leroy knew he would have gone nuts if he hadn't made a game out of the rats from the beginning. He could hit a rat on the run at 50 feet, hit it right in the face. About that, he was very proud. Leroy had noticed the increase in rats over the last few weeks. He'd shot hundreds of them, but there were so many, he'd taken to bringing along city-issued packets of poison that he'd dip in peanut butter. You love peanut butter, don't you, fellas? 
Leroy shouted at the rats. He knew they loved peanut butter more than anything else. Their next favorites were sardines and beer. Love your poison with a little fish and brew, don't you? <coughs> he could always tell when rats had gotten a good dose, because the poison would react with the rats' digestive juices and puff them up with gas. The rats would swell up to twice their size before they died a horrible, painful death. He'd hear them dying. In their last hour, they'd stagger over the top of the dump like drunk balloons. Leroy loved pumping their bloated bodies full of BBs. He'd hit them dead in their eyes, making their eyeballs pop and leak and explode out their sockets. Leroy spotted a fresh pile, fresh pile of dumped appliances and furniture. He left the bulldozer motor running and got down with the BB gun to check things out. I'm looking for a good refrigerator, he mumbled. Wouldn't mind finding a decent cutting board either. Half of his house was furnished with stuff he'd found at the dump, including a 21-inch mahogany TV picture-in-picture -picture and a swap button. Bing! Bing! He got off a few sh sh good shots of the bloated rats on top of the body of a dead collie somebody had thrown out with the trash. People had no respect anymore when it came to what was legal garbage and what wasn't. He plodded further away from the bulldozer and pulled his boots up as he sank deeper into the garbage. For a while, he forgot about the time and enjoyed shooting every rat he could. When he turned to start back to the bulldozer, <coughs> he noticed a half dozen very large rats sitting on a distant ridge of garbage. Bing! Bing! He fired at them one after the other. He hit several of them right in the head. Dark red fluid gushed out of their mouths and ears. He was about 50 feet from the bulldozer and went after another line of fat rats that appeared on the highest ridge. I'll shoot you in your ears, Leroy yelled at them. In your ears and in your bellies, I'll hit it where it hurts. He spotted a swollen mother rat trying to salvage her nest of straw and threads and bottle caps. In a moment, he was standing over her, pumping her mouth full of lead pellets. He saw her naked, furless babies barely able to move, and he shot each of them too. Their heads burst off their bodies, and he laughed. Ha 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 ha! He was laughing when the first rat bit him. He hadn't seen it coming. He remembered the line of them on the ridge, but suddenly one of the rats turned and raced across the top of the garbage. Before Leroy could do anything, the rat was in the air. It landed on his shoulders, digging its claws into his collarbone and sinking its chisel-shaped front teeth into his back. Whoa! Leroy yelled. Uh, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Leroy reached around and grabbed the rat by its wet, oily fur. He tore it off of him along with a strip of his own skin, punched the rat, and hurled it away across the dump. For a few moments, he tried to laugh, but he was too surprised by the attack. Confused. He couldn't think of anything funny to tell himself. That was when he felt something he'd never felt before. Something like... like fear. It was the sight of a hundred, two hundred rats that came over the ridge as a unit, he, you came away from me, he shouted as the rats inched closer. His voice was empty now, hollow. He felt his arms begin to shake and his belly drew into a chilled, rock-hard knot. Che, che. The rats made low sounds like some sort of large, half-muted fowl or seabirds. As they advanced, the garbage made its own crackling noise from under the army's weight. His tongue grew thick and dry and his ears started to tear and burn. His instincts told him to get out of there. Fast. Get back to the bulldozer. Leroy started off, but his boots sank deeper. He got less than ten feet before he noticed several dozen of the rats had ducked into the garbage and were writhing beneath the debris in front of him. Thick brown bodies, some as large as a foot, slithered like shining fish beneath the surface of a muddy pond. They closed in and climbed swiftly to the surface, a dozen rats began to bite at Leroy's legs as he spun around, swinging the butt of his BB gun. You get away from me! You get away! Several larger rodents from the ridge were airborne now. They landed as a single clump on Leroy's neck, biting him deeply. The rats hung on tight like a living, gnawing scarf as he screamed. Ah! Twenty, thirty rats were biting at his legs now, ripping open veins and arteries as they tripped him. No! Leroy cried, trying to crawl the distance to the bulldozer. 
There was a flurry at his groin, and he doubled over like a fetus as rats with large front teeth began to gnaw through his T-shirt and into the folds of his stomach. Another mob of rats rushed Leroy, and his body began to convulse, his whole body being shook violently, desperately trying to throw off the feeding rats. The wounds of his abdomen were larger now, bloodier, gashes two and three inches wide. Several smaller, muscular rats scooted in to wriggle their heads into his wounds, the rats crawled under his skin, their sharp, relentless teeth chewing through his layers of stomach fat toward the moist, curling warmth of his intestines. Leroy was on his side, his legs flailing, striking out against a rusted ice chest that lay on a ruptured mattress. He could feel the rodents inside of him now, moving, squirming. At last, a wail bubbled up through his frothing lips, a treble scream of pain and shock and amazement. Air and lymph gushed from Leroy's mouth, and his eyes froze open and suddenly glazed. There was a final reflex, a gentle quivering of the body, while his steaming entrails spilled out like snakes of chalk into the morning air. Oh, 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 that's so gross. <laughs> I can hardly even read that. <laughs> I drink. Okay, okay, that's over. Oh, no, oh, that part, that part where they're like crawling under his skin while he's still alive. Like, like who come, who comes up with this stuff? So again, if you like those fluffy bunnies and nice like little pet kind of uh, books not the book for you. If you like those kind of horror, like I want to wet my bed late at night when it sounds like there's rats in the walls, uh, this, would be, this would be the book for you. Rats are crazy too because just like beavers, their teeth never stop growing, so they're always trying to gnaw on things. Um, and they've been known to gnaw through, you know, the cement walls and just like anything. Um, and anything that their skull can fit through, their body can fit through. Uh, and if you think about a rat, a rat's kind of shaped like a like a wedge where their head is really really small and they have kind of a larger body. So that means you you get you get a hole like the size of a dime and like a large rat can come on through that hole and ah, 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 ah. I'm going to go home and like get out a bunch of like cock or something and and you know just fill in all the holes of you know my house and just oh that's so gross. I don't want anything to do with that. Um, so that's, that's Paul Zendel. He's got a couple of those other books out. Um, there's Raptor, um, about these mutant creatures and dinosaurs that are out in this island. Uh, there's The Reef of Death, about these underwater kind of uh, creatures. Um, and if you ever swam in the ocean, like that's so creepy knowing that the bottom of the ocean is like hundreds and thousands of feet beneath you and you don't know what's down there. That's creepy. Um, and this one, Night of the Bat, and this one is kind of the same idea of those rats attacking, only these guys can fly. Bats are basically like flying rats. Um, and uh, what, what happens is that he, the, the, our main character has a dream right at the beginning of it, and he be, dreams he's being attacked by these, uh, by these bats. And, uh, and he's, he screams, he's like, ah! A bat like lands on his face and like starts crawling into his mouth. <gasps> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Um, but that is Paul Zindel, kind of horror, gross kind of, uh, kind of fiction, um, if you like that kind of thing. Um, and if you could, if you could, give a huge big thank you, um, to your teachers, uh, Ms. Simpson and, uh, Ms. Moss, um, for being willing to work through this. This is brand new. We've never really done this before, um, and we kind of just set this up today because we knew you guys weren't going to be here in the media center um, and they just they just did an absolutely fabulous job of uh, being willing to roll with uh, with that and to be able to work with me to get this set up for you guys. Um, I, I don't remember if I said at the beginning, but uh, the other books that I've read to you, we only had like one or two books on the shelf of them. This one we have 10. <coughs> and I know you guys missed checkout today, um, and many of you have books that you're still reading. Uh, but remember, if you want to, uh, the library is open before and after school every day. Um, so if you're finished with your book and you want to come in and grab one of these, I don't know why you would, but, uh, if you do, um, they're, uh, they're in here on the shelf, Paul Zindel, 
for the Delta, the, the book is rats. So this is uh, Mr. Martin signing off from the Media Center um, for another episode of Mr. Martin Reads. Uh, and hopefully um, we can do this again. Good luck and thank you.